Hello, I'm coming to you again with another tutorial. Um, today's tutorial will be how to loom a bow. Um, this is a headband that I loomed on the round loom. Um, the bow can be done on a round loom or a um, long loom. Doesn't matter, as long as it comes out looking like a bow, you're fine. Um, with this bow, I used six pegs for this one um for this one i used i think it was about yeah eight it was eight or six on this one um this is a chunky soap a super bulky yarn so this one will all this one will always be different from your regular four waisted yarn um but you can use between six to eight pegs. Um, using eight pegs will make a bigger bow. Um, using six pegs will make a smaller bow. Um, so today we are going to use um, eight pegs today. Um, you can have you have the choice of either using a number. Um, I think this is a number five. The super bulky. This is um, Home Lions brand yarn. I don't think it's homespun. But um, this is Lion Brands yarn. Um, I got this yarn last year from Walmart. It was about two ninety seven. dollars um, Usually those skeins are about $4.99 at Joann's or Michael's. So make sure you check your Walmart from yarns too that are um, a little bit cheaper. So like I said, I'm using this one. Um, I don't know where the wrapper is. I just made it into a cake uh, with my yarn winder. Um, so yes, you need just one strand of that. Um, you would either need a crochet hook, doesn't matter what size, you're just weaving in ends. But you need a crochet hook or a tapestry needle, whichever one works for you. You will need a round loom because we're going to use a round loom today. Um, it does not matter which one you use, but I suggest that you use the smallest one because you're only going to use eight pegs. So the smaller, the better, the way it's not, you know, in the way and super just unnecessary extra pegs. This is something small. This is all you need. Um, and you will need your hook. Um, like I said, you could use and you could use a um, long loom. But like I said, I do do not recommend using Boyd looms. Like I said, today we're going to work on the round loom. So you, this is also a suggestion. Um, so yes, this is all that we need. Um, oh, if you're going to use a number four type of yarn, you will need to use two strands. This is two strands. This is Karen Simply Soft. Um, I just, like I said, made it just a little bow with it. But um, yes, Karen Simply Soft. You will need two strands if you're using number four wasted yarn. And like I said, this type of yarn, you will only need one strand like I did with this one. Um, so I we will get started. Um, just move stuff out of the way. And like I said, we're going to use our round peg. It does not matter where you start. Um, I have a tendency to start where the anchor peg is right here. So just for the sake of trying to stay on, on track, um, I'm going to start right there. Um, you will make a slip knot. This slip knot does not have to be extra long and all of that jazz. Just like a little regular slip knot because you're going to ultimately weave in your ends so you just tighten it up make sure you get it on there and like i said with a number four you can do the same thing that i'm doing with this bulky yarn you will do the same thing with the number four uh, just because i do not start right here today i am um, this one, it doesn't matter. Like I said, if you were using, if you were going to make a hat, I would not suggest that you would start right across from here. I always start right here. But today, we're going to start right here because we're just making a bow and we're not trying to make it complicated. So we're going to wrap it. 
And I also suggest do not wrap your pegs all at once. I know most people tell you to do that. I highly suggest that you do not do that. You just wrap them individually one at a time. It will save you a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. So yes, we're just using a regular, a regular E-wrap cast on. That's all we're doing. And today we're going to use eight pegs, one at a time. Bring your bottom over your top. And please make sure that you have liked and you have subscribed. Please comment below for what other videos you would like to see because I am taking notes. Um, I will starting. I will be starting to get videos out. Um, like I said, I just did a podcast, so make sure that you are and make sure you keep count. So one, two, three, four, five. Make sure that you are tuned in to my podcast. And like I said, you just keep going around. Like I said, individually. Until you have eight pegs. So one, two, three, four, seven. Okay, the last peg. Until you bring in the bottom over the top. Pull on it. So now we have eight pegs. Just pull those down. And like I said, this will be a bigger bow. So we just did that one. So you just simply go in front of the last one that you did. Bring this over a little bit. Because what will happen will be... When once you pull this over it, this will fall off as well, and the whole thing will come off. So, kind of like loosen it up a little bit, and like I said, just bring it over the top, and there you go. And like I said, you just keep doing the same thing push that down. We're going to do an E wrap. Now, I will tell you this. Because we only have eight, you can wrap at least three, no more than three for your, for your cast on. That's where you wrap it individually. But for this, you can wrap three at a time, maybe four at a time. Like I said, I would not go over three just because it will create a laddering effect. And your bow will look wopsided. So like I said, just keep on going. But like I said, to cast on, never, ever, ever wrap the whole peg first. For your first cast on, individually wrap them and knit off. This right here, you can do do not knit more than three off at a time. Like I said, four, you're pushing it. But definitely not over four. And like I said, watch your attention because it can be a little tight. Like I said, once you keep going, it gets a little bit looser. Normal, this is normal for the this cast on to be a little tight. But... We're going to keep going. And like I said, once you came back around, move your this out of the way. Come back. Once we knit off here, you can pull that off your anchor peg. So like I said. And you got to make sure they're separated because it likes to split. Just bring it over there. And then just keep going. Now it's starting to get easier to 
knit over. Now, and then like I said, you just pull this off of your anchor peg because you no longer need this. This no longer serves a purpose. So this could actually just sit over here out of the way. And like I said, we're just going to keep going for some rows. Um, I suggest that you watch the videos first before you ever start a project. So I will be back after some rows and I will let you know what number you should be on. See ya. Okay, we are back. So like I said, that's your yarn. So this is what it should look like right now. Again, it will look a little funky until you get it um, together and stitched right. But so far, um, I have done 36 rows. So with the 36 rows, we're going to measure it in inches. So we're going to measure it from the inside. So one inch. To about almost 10 inches um, a little bit past the nine inches so it's like right there in the middle so like I say it's it's more so dependent on how you want the boat to look if you want it to be short if you want it to be long to where you can have big enough um, bows part right here now if you want it shorter yeah shorter then you wouldn't do so many rows um, so like I said, this is 36, this is 36, so I'm going to press my stitch marker, my row counter one more time, 37, so like I said, we're just going to go around, and you're working it in a flat panel, and this is okay for you to wrap all of these, this is okay but do not wrap a actual whole peg and i'm going to set that right there there pick this back up so again we are going to knit off pull the bottom over the top and usually the bulkier yarn is a little bit harder but that's okay and you just keep going around and I know you're probably like okay how do I know how I want the bow to be how long well, sometimes you can always do this. Put the end of it right here. And you can turn it around. And like I said, if you scratch it a little bit, if you can put your finger right here and you still it still measures out about the same, then you can go ahead and stop. I'm going to stop at 40 rows. So, like I said, that was 37. This is going to be... 38 so again I'm going to bring this in the front hold it knit it over and then I'm going to keep on going so pull it a little bit like I said not too tight but not loose either and just keep going round and round And then, and it works out good when this is wrapped around uh, it as in a cake. That way it's easier to come off. And this is a Hobby Lobby loom. This is the smallest loom in the four pack set. Uh, so you just keep bringing it around. So we're gonna hit it again. This is row 39, so bring it in front, knit it off, and now we're just going to wrap it. And 
and it is okay for your for it to look like this for it to kind of like curl inward like that that is fine you will straighten all of that out once you take it off the loom just bring it over bring it over bring it over bring it over push them down and we're getting ready to do our last row um, again also you do not have to use your hands to push these down remember in the last video I said you can push them down with this you actually can so we're gonna hit 40 so this will be 40 40 rows set that over there like I said bring it in front hold it knit this first one off you always want to knit the first one off pull it push it down and like I said you just go to e-wrapping keep on e-wrapping like I said, I just bring, sometimes I go ahead and knit this off. If you don't want to hold it like this, go ahead and knit that off first. Or otherwise, you can hold it like I did. Just bring it over and hold it. Um, and you keep putting it down. bring it over okay so I'm gonna come back I'm gonna let you work on your rows whatever rows you have left you can now go ahead and finish those and I am going to come back okay we're back so hopefully around this time you have finished your rows now it is time to bind off so whether we don't need this right this second so we put that to the side so where the yarn is coming off at usually when you do a hat you wrap it all the way around until the anchor peg again and then you cut it off well with this one it'll be a little bit different so we're coming from right here so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it about right here so counting from here one two three four five six stop on number six going the opposite way so we're going to cut it and that is done so we're going to move this out of the way and now we can go ahead and knit off so how we're going to knit off is just bring it at the bottom pick this up bring it up and out and we just keep doing that all the way around like you would just like you would knit off a and you can take them off as you go that way you can pull it a little bit but just like you would knit off a hat this is the same way and take them off the peg as you go do not release that one yet And pick up your your loop, bring it on the bottom, and pull it. Take it off. Do not take this one off until you have 
binded this one off. So once you pull it out, and if you were using worsted weight yarn, you would make sure you make sure you get all of the yarn. So we're done with that. So we're gonna set that to the side. And now we have this weird looking, this weird looking jazz going on. Like how weird does that look? Doesn't look like it's gonna be much, but just wait, okay? So we're just going to fold this in half, fold it in half. Fold it in half, and at the same time, while folding it, go ahead and pull it on, pull on it a little bit. That way, it can it can ease up the edges where it is trying to keep it. Um, as you see, one end is looser than the other. This end right here, all you have to do is just pull on it pull on it until it looks like like so just like the other side until it looks like that it's about the same shape this looking like this and look this looking like this does not matter because what you're going to um, feed them in to close this up so that part doesn't matter like I said you just keep pulling on it make sure it's it's all together and like I said now you have two strings well we're going to use this end first where it's the loosest the loosest uh, this end we probably end in will end up not needing this so just leave that for right there for right now and like I said you can use a you can use a, a tapestry needle the thing is, you will have to feed it in. So, let me see if I'm if I'm still a a tapestry needle pro. Sometimes I can get it. Sometimes I can't. Most of the time, uh, that's the only thing about it. It will unravel your yarn. So, a lot of the times, I have to do it with the end. Just bring all the ends through and do it like that. But like I said, you can use a a a crochet hook. I'm sorry. So like I said, we're just gonna go on the seam. So this right here, the seam right here, we're just gonna go in that seam. So and like I said, it does not matter because it's the same color. So, yeah, doesn't really matter. And like I said, you want to make sure you have pulled on that good enough to where it is the same size. And just like I said, just go in the seams. And you just keep going and you see how it's closing up so far sometimes the bulky weight number four is a little rougher to weave in those ends so like I said I'm still pulling on it so as I'm as as far as I'm concerned I'm done um, with this you can actually weave it in you can actually weave it back in just straight across and then tie it right here 
and I'll show you. So we're just going to weave in this end and you will not be able to see it because normally this is how I do my bows. Um, like I said, they could be bows to put in little girl's hair or adult's hair or doll's hair. Like I'm saying, I'm just going straight across. So there's no, there's no specific, um, I guess you would say, um, design that I'm following when doing this as far as like putting the, the yarn through here. I'm just going straight across. And like I said, because it is a bulky, I think this is a number five. A bulky or, or, or number six, it may be. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments because I forgot to get my, you see how that looks? I forgot to get the label. So you kind of see where like this is kind of like open a little bit. So what you can do is, is you could take that shorter side, go back in there, and then just, like I said, just tie a little knot. Or you could take that longer side and just go back and forth. So I'm going to bring this through here, and I'm going to take that shorter side, and I'm just going to go at the very edge. So at the very edge where I want it to close up, I'm just going to bring it through there and this is where I want it closed so I'm going to tie a a very I guess you would say tight knot uh, but then at the, also at the same time you will not be able to see the knot so that's what I want to say make sure when you tie your knot you're not able to see the knot uh, like I said, or like I said, when you're done with the knot, you can go back on the seams if you want to, or you can bring this back in there and you can cut this off. However it works for you, for me, I'm just going to tie another knot and, cloak, and cut as close as I can to that knot. That way I am done and then we can move on. Like I say, you pull on it as tight as you can. I'm going to cut as close as I can get to that knot, and you're you are not able to see the knot. So now it's the time where you will pinch the bow. That will look like that until we do all of this. Um, but we're going to find the middle part of this and we're again going to get our yarn because we're going to wrap it. Now you don't, you do not have to use the same color. You can do different colors with this. But for the video's sake, I'm going to use this. So I'm just going to, and a lot of people, sometimes people do like this. Fold it in the middle, pull it again, fold it in the middle. And bring that in the middle of it. And guess what? There's the middle. There's the even middle. So you don't have to try to figure out what is what. So with my bows, I just wrap. I just wrap as many times as I want to. Um, some people like a thick bow like this that is in the middle. Um, some people like it a little bit thinner. Um, it's, it's basically whatever works for you. And while wrapping this in the middle, you need to constantly pull this so it can, so it can pinch and it can have that bow effect. So as I'm wrapping it, I am pulling on it quite tight and kind of do it where it is even, even as possible. And like I said, it's up to you how thick you want the middle to be. Um, 
it's all up to you and I think I'm going to stop so this will be the back of the bow so I'm going to stop and I'm going to cut off a little bit because I need to weave in this end to make exactly sure that this does not come apart and again you can either get your tapestry needle or you can get the crochet hook I'm going to feed it through here and right where I stopped I'm just going to weave it in here And you can't tell from the front where I pulled it, any of that. So like I said, I'm just going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, pull it. And eventually you are going to, you're going to cut it. Um, because I know some people like to add the clamps where you can actually clamp on to the child's um, clothes or the child's hair. So again, that is one of those things where it is strictly up to you. Uh, I am just showing you what I do. And like I said, I'm going to go back and forth until the end of this is gone or until I have weave this in enough and then I could, again, I could cut as close as I can to it and I could just cut it off without me having to worry about oh is this going to come off and right here that is good enough for me so I'm just going to cut and you don't see it so because I have weaved this in so much it is not coming apart so now is the time where you can, um, I guess they would say, you would say fluff your bow. Um, this time you will pull it, kind of you mold it to what you want it to look like. So I'm just doing a little molding here and just going to kind of pinch on it a little bit and that's your bow so that is how I loom my bows again thank you for watching and also make sure that you are subscribed comment and like and share the video see you next time